A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive. This one is part 65. Machining a phosphor bronze water inlet connection for the live steam injector. My reason for using phosphor bronze rather than brass is simply strength. Phosphor bronze is much stronger. Machining this part from a piece of brass would have been okay. A lot of the parts on engines are made from brass. But this particular fitting sticks out of the back of the drag beam where it is then connected to a suitable water tank on the driving truck behind the engine. I also chose to thread this component so it could be fitted with a suitable water pipe adapter which on this engine I'm going to make from brass. The logic being that the easily removable brass fitting is a sacrificial component. If that should get damaged it's very easy to remove it but the main part, made of phosphor bronze, should remain relatively undamaged. What I'm currently doing is machining a piece of phosphor bronze hexagon which is in my Boxford lathe's chuck. You can easily tell that it's not brass by the way the chippings come off. They come off like steel in a long coil. You can also see this as I centre drill the part. Fossil bronze is a great material to work with. This stuff is leaded bronze. Although it still does get very hot during the machining process. I'm currently machining the hexagon bar down to 3 eighths of an inch. I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I'll mention it again. When you're machining pieces of metal that get very hot, always be aware that the metal expands when it's hot, so your final part may end up under size. That's why coolant is useful, because obviously it's in the name, it keeps the work cool, but I don't like using it. It makes a mess on the lathe and around the general area, as well as on my clothes. Then I smell like a machine tool, which is not a very attractive smell. With the end of the bar centre drilled and the outside diameter now down to three eighths of an inch, it's time to thread this end. I'm not using a tailstock die holder, I'm using a standard hand type die holder which has been kept perfectly square to the work using the tailstock chuck. Here's another way of doing it. This is a tailstock die holder support. So I can only take it as far as the end of the work. Using the tailstock chuck though is a better idea because you can guide the die all the way down the work. And the threaded part travels down inside the chuck. I cut the thread with the die holder manually, but then once I'd done that, to unwind it, I powered up the lathe in reverse. This is the first part completed. In this image it looks a bit rough, but it isn't. These are just particles of swarf. An old paintbrush soon takes care of this. I'll get rid of the rest of the swarf with an airline. I'm just checking that the union cone fits into the taper okay, and it does. In this part of the clip, I'm checking the fit of the commercial union nut on the thread, and it's very good indeed. Now it's time to drill a hole into the fitting, because this cannot be a water fitting if it's solid in the middle. Please be aware that I'm not going to drill all the way through. I'm drilling approximately halfway down the finished fitting. Once I've finished this side, I'll turn it around in the chuck and work on the other side, completely independently of this side. That way, the centre hole will be in the centre. To be honest, I nearly fouled up on this job. Here I'm parting it off, but it's a tiny bit short. I hadn't taken into consideration what the thickness of the locomotive's drag beam was. A bit of careful adjustment later on and a little bit more machining that I haven't shown put the job right. Often when I want to shorten a double union, I will fit it in a union nut, clamp the union nut in the chuck, tighten the chuck securely, then turn the end that is sticking out. Please note it does not work in this application. With a negative rate cutting tool and a piece of phosphor bronze, I really am asking for trouble. I wasn't surprised when the part jumped out of the chuck. Here's an action replay. A more sensible way to do this job is to clamp the part by the hexagon. But there is another way which is even better. 
Put a piece of brass into the chuck, clamp it tightly, centre drill the end, then drill it out to be tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. Then using a tap, thread the hole and simply screw the fitting that I've just made into the hole and that would be going nowhere. But no, I didn't do that. I like to do things the hard way. I use the logic that if you see me doing it wrong and see what happens, then it's more than likely you won't have this problem. With the part held by the hexagon, it seems to be more than rigid enough, so I'm just repeating what you've already seen on the other end. I'm just about to thread it 3 8 by 32. The hexagon part of the work is a bit too thick, I need to make it smaller. So once again, I've clamped the part in the chuck using a union nut on the original thread. But this time, the outer part of it is being supported by a live centre, so it turns OK. In this clip, I'm removing the work from the nut whilst it's still in the chuck using a barco spanner. Gripping the hexagon part in the chuck jaws has marked the phosphor bronze slightly, but no matter, this cleaned up all right. After making the fitting and cleaning it up, it's now time to make the nut that secures the fitting to the drag beam. It's a simple bit of plain turning. I just face across the front and then I use a centre drill, a bit of lubricant and then it's followed by a twist drill which is tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. Phosphor bronze has a really bad habit of grabbing things like it just did with the twist drill. Once the twist drill got to the end of the hole that had been drilled by the centre drill, it cut OK. This is a very simple part and you may wonder why I'm showing it at such length. The reason is to show options on how to do it and pitfalls because making things like this is a fairly common part of model engineering. OK, I didn't make the union nut and I didn't make the union cone, but that is not the point. It's hardly worth it as they are commercial items. I could make parts like this if I wanted to, though. But that's enough for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.